Certainly. So uh, first, I'm just going to give a warning. I typically give very long answers to very short questions. So the sooner you ask your question, the better chance you have to get it answered. Uh, the story about Professor Dejani, he's truly a remarkable person. He comes from a very old family. Uh, his family, by the way, is the family that is entrusted with keeping what is considered the tomb of King David. So that could be another reason why he feels confident in recognizing and acknowledging that the Jewish people have a right to the land uh, and not foreigners, not crusaders, not interlopers. Uh, so he truly believes in the importance of understanding the other side without thinking that it takes anything from him. There is uh, a wrong view among Arab Palestinians and in the Arab world in general, and it's a very dangerous view, that Israel exists thanks to the Holocaust. This is this wrong view, which uh, I call Zionism denial. We all know what Holocaust denial is. I call this Zionism denial because it denies the history of Zionism before the Holocaust. It basically tells a story that Europe did something terrible to the Jews. At the end of the war, there were some leftover Jews. The final solution, unfortunately, was not so final. So there were some leftover Jews, and the guilty Europeans wanted to find some place for them, so they gave them some territory in the Levant, uh, to which they had, so that they just happened to control, but to which the Jews had no connection. It threw them there. Because it threw them there, it also threw out the Palestinians. And this is kind of the story you have. That Israel is kind of, um, how she will say, a, a consolation gift by guilty Europeans to the Jewish people. And this is a story that persists to this day. It's a story that sometimes, as a result, leads the Europeans to believe that they are responsible for the Arab Palestinians because it's their responsibility, it's what they do. And I find it to be a terrible story and a very dangerous one because it denies the entire history of Zionism from the 19th century, not to mention that it denies the entire connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel for centuries and millennia back. And if Israel came into being, it's not because anyone felt guilty, in parentheses, the last thing that Europeans felt after World War II was guilty. It took them at least a generation to begin to even discuss guilt. But no one, the Israel has come into being because the Jewish people willed it into being through their actions, sorry. I mean, through their dreams, through their actions, through their work. In fact, before World War II, Israel existed in all but name. And just like India and Pakistan came into being, World War II mattered because of the dissolution of the British Empire. Israel would have come into being because the British Empire would have been dissolved. And just as Pakistan and India didn't need a genocide to justify and come into existence, neither did Israel. So there's this view that Israel exists thanks to the Holocaust. It's a very common view. And as a result, people feel that if they study about the Holocaust, if they learn about it, if they know about it, if they pain for it, it somehow means supporting Zionism, supporting Israel. And as a result, you see among the Arab world, the Arab Palestinians, sometimes broadly in the Muslim world, Holocaust denial as a means of rejecting Israel. And as a result, when Professor Dejani decided that part of his responsibility as a professor is to teach his students about the other, and he correctly understood that teaching his students about the Holocaust doesn't take a thing 
from his belief in the right of the self-determination of the Arab Palestinians in the land, in their right for a state of their own. They can learn and study about the Holocaust. They can pain for the Jewish people and what they went through without that taking from who they are and what they fight for and what they wish for. But again, this is a very courageous view. It's a very rare view. And when he did that, it created an uproar that he was a normalizer. You know, there's nothing worse today to be a normalizer, someone who has normal relations with Israel, that he is a traitor. There were death threats. And ultimately, and he felt he got no support from his university. And ultimately, he felt that he had to resign, and people let him go very easily. And I want to say something in this context about academic boycotts and hypocrisy. Because Professor Dejani was the head of the American Studies Department of Al-Quds University, an Arab-Palestinian university in East Jerusalem. The first academic association to vote to boycott Israel academically was the American Studies Association. The American Studies Association had nothing, nothing to say about the head of the American Studies Department in Al-Quds University losing his job over teaching his students the Holocaust and taking them to an educational study of Auschwitz. They had nothing to say on that. And this just demonstrates to you, if you didn't already know, which I'm sure you did, the incredible hypocrisy that exists in all these efforts to isolate, to boycott Israel, where there is no willingness to discuss anything else, and certainly not on the other side. Yeah, we have a question.